Fun fact for you guys, did you know that every weekday in New York City, 5.7 million people use the city subway system? That's almost as many people as it takes to get inside Six Flags. But if you ask any writer, they're always going to complain, and it's always going to be about the transit system. However, every day, New Yorkers struggle to make it onto that subway at all, because of the rising fares, the poverty, and it's mostly race and policing. Hypothetically, like the trains were to just cut off one day, a lot of people in my neighborhood wouldn't even be able to commute to the places they need to go. Today in 2017, one metro car swipe is $2.75, whereas an unlimited ride is gonna cost $121. Take it from me, that's outrageous. I've noticed that um, a lot of arrests have happened for people who jump, in, jump the turnstiles, and that's a direct criminalization of poverty. It's not a, and a criminalization of like black and brown bodies, um, because 94% of the people arrested last year for theft of services were people of color. That we're trying to use law enforcement to make up for a problem that's an economic problem. So there's uh, over 8 million New Yorkers in this city, and I think like something like a quarter of them. Um, just by the numbers, literally cannot afford to take public transportation. A story of a black youth, Alexis Sumter, caught attention in local news outlets in the city, such as the New York Post. Alexis, a teenage black girl, was cuffed by police at 125th Street in Harlem for using a free student metro card. Cops arrested her because they would not believe she was young enough to be using the card. As the NYCT system seems to get worse and worse by the day, Mayor de Blasio and New York Governor Cuomo are in dispute over who should fund the system to save it. Because the system already runs on a deficit and depends on subsidies and feuds over the funding continues, it seems unlikely that the MTA will even consider helping low-income riders anytime soon. Protocols for handling fare beaters has changed, going from arrests to fines for persons with identification. However, fines don't seem to help with the degrees of punishment people face for fair beating. Well, first of all, no one should have to go to court for jumping the turnstiles. Um, mm -hmm. I think that that's ridiculous. Because we don't want to have also to spend all of this taxpayer money that city and the state claim that they don't have to add more police officers or to put someone through arraignments or to put them through the court system. All that takes money. Well, you already spend over $5 billion a year on the NYPD. Recently, the Manhattan and Brooklyn DA explained that they hope to stop prosecuting fair beaters sometimes this year. No, I think it's great. We actually had a roundtable discussion about um, with, with Senator Jesse Hamilton and a couple of other like city council members about, about that exact thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's a long time coming, and it's something that we're excited about and hope that we actually see like come into fruition. However, some still don't believe a real solution has been offered by the city's leaders. When prosecutors come out and try to say that they're going to change the criminal justice system, I think a lot of people should kind of like squint their eyes and take a closer look at what that. For not having 275, you're still punishing someone. So you're still saying this person, instead of us giving them reduced fare or free metro cards to help them, right? We are going to find a new way to punishment. So instead of locking them up in Rikers or locking them up, putting them in central buildings, we're going to put them in community service. That's still something that straddles people who shouldn't be punished for being poor. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention?